Welcome to the Epic Homestead. Today I'm gonna roast and eat an entire sunflower head because I saw it on a Facebook video from Baker Creek Heirloom Seeds a long time ago. It's since kind of made the rounds online and everyone's trying it, so I'm joining the fun. Let's talk about it though. You don't wanna roast a mature sunflower head. This one is immature. You know that because these ray flower petals are still on the plant and all the seeds, which I'll show you in a second, aren't mature yet. They're not ready to like completely dry up and roast or save for future propagation. The back is still nice and green. So it's ready to harvest. I think it'll be nice and tender when we roast it up. Let's go ahead and chop it off. There we go. Before we roast this, we have to actually prepare it. So let me show you what you need to do. The first thing you're gonna do is just remove all of the ray petals, which Honestly, still look pretty good. Maybe there's something we can do with these here at the homestead. We can like spring, you know what? I'll save them as the table dressing or the plating for this. That seems like the right chef's move. Jacques is in the background nodding his head, so we know it's approved because the garden hermit knows how to cook. The next thing I'm gonna do is brush off all the disc flowers, but I'm gonna show you a close up of that. Many might not know this, but this is a secondary flower within the exterior of the sunflower, the ray petals. You have these disc flowers that can all just easily be brushed off. One of the more satisfying things you're gonna do in the garden. It just feels so good to just brush these off like this, but you wanna clean all of these off and take a look at the actual sunflower seeds. They're immature. So this is one that would have been a confectionery style, one that would have a stripe, sort of black and white pattern on it. It's all white. That's how we know it's immature. We want the seed hull to not be super tough when we bite into it, ideally. So this middle sometimes can be a little bit trickier to get off because the seeds tend to be smaller in that exterior, or that interior. But once this is off, we'll give it a quick little brush and then we're good to season it up. Like I said, homegrown seasonings are going on top for the most part. This is one of my Russian red hardneck garlics. I have not tried this one yet. It's kind of just been curing and sitting around. So let's crack it open. Let me show you actually. Let's crack this bad boy open. Ooh, look at that clove. Look at that freaking clove, guys. Okay, probably just two cloves. So my cooking plan for this is to roast it in the oven and then put it on top of the stove and sort of soften it up a little bit. I'm not sure actually of the order to do those in yet but I'm keeping these seasonings right now really simple. This is homegrown garlic. I'm just gonna dice this up. And then I'm gonna do some olive oil right here. This came from a friend of mine, Rachel, whose family owns an olive orchard and they press their own oils. So really excited about that. These cloves are massive though. I mean, look at the size of these cloves. I might actually have too much. It's gonna be garlic forward, as the chef world would say. Garlic forward dish. All right, let's chop it up. Seasonings kept simple. Garlic's minced as much as I have the patience to mince it up. Let's get it in this little bowl here. I'll add the olive oil. We'll stir it around and then we're gonna brush it onto our delicious, delicious sunflower. I'm gonna give it a healthy dose of oil. I think I really wanna coat the entire surface with oil. So that should be enough, should be enough. Got a little slurry going on. And now the moment of truth. Just get it in there. Let's just get it all the way in. Every single nook and cranny is gonna be covered in this oil, olive oil, garlic slurry. Kinda hard because the actual sunflower is quite an odd surface. It's a sort of sloped surface, but we'll get it in there somehow. Honestly, I think I might need more. Just for good measure, we're gonna hit it with a little drizz, a little quick drizz. There we go. We're gonna reapply some of the fallen debris. And let's get this in the oven. The way I saw this done was by placing the sunflower face down on a grill after you covered it with oil and your toppings. I don't have a grill yet, so what I'm gonna do is I preheated this oven to 375 Fahrenheit. I've crafted this little onion stand because <laughs> the sunflower is so curved. I don't want to broil it and have the, just the top, like this side right here, get singed. 
So I've tried to even it out just a little bit. I'm gonna toss it in. I preheated at 375. Here's my plan. I'm gonna keep it on broil on the low end right here, not right up at the top, for like three minutes maybe. See if I can get a nice sort of roast on there. And then after that, I'm gonna keep it in the oven for about 15 minutes to try to soften it up. I may decide to put it into a pan and cover the pan and try to steam soften it and see what happens. This is just an experiment. I'm not the best cook. This is just my logic here. So if you have a better way, throw it in the comments. But let's turn it on to broil. While we are baking that bad boy in the oven, I do want some spices to go on top after the fact. So I'm gonna take some columnar basil. This is Greek columnar basil. And when I'm harvesting it, I'm just gonna harvest it in a prune fashion. So I'm cutting right above a node where they branch out just so I get it a little bit more bushy. The columnar basil is actually really columnar, but you can force it to bush if you want to. So this should be good on that, just a couple sprigs. And then I'm gonna come up here and we'll grab probably some marjoram. I'll do a couple sprigs of marjoram. That's all I really wanna do. I'll get some spices too. I'm sure I'm not telling you guys anything you don't already know, but easy way to do this is to just hold the top and just gently strip down. And then you just pop the top off when you're stripping your herbs. So we'll do that here. Basil can be a little trickier because there's some offshoots, but same, same principle applies. You don't need to stress about getting every single little bit of it either. There's plenty, plenty more. We'll give these a little dice as well. After the broil session, I decided to put it into the aluminum foil and bake it for 15 minutes to maybe try and soften it up a little bit. So let's see. Ooh, that does not look bad at all. All right. All right, the first thing I'm gonna do is just toss over some of that marjoram and basil and olive oil mixture right on top. We'll let it naturally fall over. That seems okay to me. I don't think we need to go overboard with this. And then we will plate it up with a little bit of the ancestral leaves <laughs> that used to be on the plant. I don't know why, but I really can get into plating. Not that this is by any means pro, I'm not trying to say that, but it is kind of fun to do. Honestly, that looks pretty cool. We're gonna give it a little pepper, sprinkling down from the heavens. We're gonna give it a nice healthy dose of sea salt. Probably not, probably too much, but whatever. It's time to eat. All right, we summoned the garden hermit. He's here to taste as well. I'm gonna do the first bite. I'm gonna go on the exterior. Apparently that's a little bit better. The seeds are a little bit softer. So I'm gonna try to get a bite that's got like a good chunk of the garlic, all the seasonings that we put on there. And yeah, let's, let's see how this thing tastes. What do you think it's gonna taste like, good? I think it's gonna be good. It smells good. Yeah, it, it smells, smells good. really good. That's actually pretty legit. Yeah? That's actually pretty dang good. Is this like a secret thing that nobody eats? It doesn't have a lot of sunflower taste. It's like at the end it's sunflowery. Yeah. But at the beginning, it's like crunchy and juicy here. Let's cut this in half and we can both, I I'm, think you're probably gonna wanna eat the whole half. Okay. So we'll cut it in half. I mean, with homegrown garlic and herbs. It's like, homegrown, yeah, uh, like the whole thing. Look at that, it almost looks like a portobello cap. <laughs> actually, look at that, guys. Okay, look at the interior. Is that not just a portobello? That's a wow. portobello. It smells? Okay, here, let's get in here. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how to describe the smell. Let's get, let's get the garden hermit, because Jacques is, Jacques is kind of a foodie. He grows for the flavor. A little bit, a little he grows bit. for the flavor. Yeah. So, let's so see if, uh, you it off let's here. see what you think. Yeah. Bites easy. Wow. It's isn't it? It's like something familiar, but I can't like <laughs> something familiar yet it. yet so far away. Yeah. You know. <laughs> it's like really tender too. It's a memory that you never had. It's one of those. <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, it's it's really good. Yeah. Okay. Mm. I think we got it at the exact point at which the seeds aren't too hard, and we cooked it 
I don't know if anyone's done a bake, a broil to a bake play, to yeah, a wrap, I haven't seen that. but it got it so tender. And I think you've got to go heavy on the oil and whatever like seasoning you really want because it's got to infuse over that, that mm -hmm. baking time. Check out how easy the seeds come out too. Yeah. I don't know if that's going to pop. Yeah, out. yeah, there you go. It just comes right out. This is a buy for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If I could buy this, this, this would like be a, a buy. This is a fancy restaurant and you saw it on the menu, you'd probably order it. Right? I No, you know what? I probably wouldn't because it'd probably be $200 a dish <laughs> and it'd be so fancy, but let alone you can just do this in your backyard. Yeah. Wow. That's actually really good. It's really unique too. Hmm. It's probably good for you too. What do you think? What do you think the bottom, like the back tastes like? Uh, I kind of, now that you've mentioned it, it kind of reminds me of like an artichoke almost. I don't know. I'm going to eat Try it. a little bit. I'm going to eat it. Honestly, it's not bad. No, it's kind of sweet. <laughs> Honestly, that's that's, that's kind of, kind of a, a delicacy. <laughs> Hold on. Let's, yeah, let's do, I'm going to do a big bite. It's crazy because hmm. I normally don't like eating sunflower seeds because it's too much work. We had a long discussion. Long discussion. <laughs> <laughs> I actually got mad. Not really, because people think I actually get mad at Jock. I don't. But <laughs> philosophically and emotionally, I got mad because I grew up eating sunflower seeds it's one of the few seeds or foods really that you eat as a pastime. You, you're not hungry. You don't maybe even care about the flavor. You're but not you're, getting anything you're, out you're, of it. You're getting a lot out of it though. And that's the thing he doesn't understand. It's a Zen moment. It's a Zen activity. And if you're with me, drop it in the comments. Are you team no sunflowers or are you team sunflower seeds? If you grew up, did you grow up playing baseball or no? No, that's the thing. I think, yeah. I think that's the big one. That might be it. Okay. Honestly, this, the part that holds the seed. Did you eat that is too? also good. And really? Now you could get to the bottom. Okay, let me try that. Let me try that. What would you call it, the sheath? <laughs> I guess, yeah. I Whoa. mean. The bottom, this part. It's a no. Really weird texture. <laughs> it's a no. <laughs> <laughs> it's not bad. Okay, hold on. But that's not the texture I expected. <laughs> Honestly, I'm here for it. I don't mind it. It's mm. like very gelatinous. Hmm. But the flavor is good. This whole experience has been good for me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I really like it. Okay, well, I'll put my recipe down in the in the comments. And uh, you know, bon appetito. <laughs> have a good have a good day. We're gonna enjoy this, and um, we'll see you in the next video. Peace out.